of strength gather, their conversation always turns to discussing the best training methods, the methods that gave them their greatest returns in muscle development, power, and strength. There's a new breed of strongman emerging today, those who have learned the secrets of improved training by applying science. The great strong men of the past trained hard, ever so hard. They distinguished themselves by their superhuman efforts. They set themselves far above their peers. The strong men of today train hard also, but the best, the ones who make it, train smart. And the inevitable consequence will be that the records of the great strong men of yesterday will be shattered. Before you can understand how to train for great strength and power, you must understand what the sport of powerlifting is all about. Hi, I'm Fred Hatfield. I could give you a list of credits, but this is the only credit that counts. doctor because of his doctorate degree in kinesiology. He is recognized as the most knowledgeable man in the sport of powerlifting today. He is smooth, great lift, and that's why he is the best in the world, Dr. Squaw. Strength is not enough. After all, our sport is not called strength lifting. It is called power lifting. And it is well named, for it is power that enables truly heavy iron to be moved, not mere strength. Power is the ability to call as many of your muscle cells as possible into action at once. A single explosive effort which fires those muscle cells and keeps them firing throughout the entire lift. It is fast, quick, explosive strength which lasts as long as you need it. The more muscle cells you can fire at once, the more weight you can lift. The more explosive force you can use, the more you can overcome the forces of inertia. You must train for this power, both physically and mentally. You must train right for the ability to reach deep within yourself, to move the big weights. You cannot do it any other way. I am not going to teach you how to train long. I am going to teach you how to train smart. There is much to learn, whether you are a powerlifter or a shot putter, football player, any athlete in practically every sport known to man, you will become more capable of training smart. Now, let's learn the secrets to making gains beyond any you've ever experienced. The system we will use is the 5-10-5 method. Like any modern training program, you will train according to a cycle. You will use five stages of preparation. This cycle will take you from the beginning of your training all the way up to your final peaking, either for a contest or a whole competition season if you are involved in seasonal power sports. You will use ten movements or exercises. These exercises will be the basic ones you will use to build muscle. You will be working with a bar and with dumbbells. And while you are working through your training cycle, you will use five stepping stones, mental techniques, and nutritional secrets to give you the extra edge. With the five stepping stones, you create the weapons you need, mentally and physically, to win. Whether you are starting out or beginning your cycle again after competition or a layoff, you must return to basics. First, this is the only way a beginner can hope to become great, to withstand the heavy stress of maximum effort under heavy iron. You must build a solid foundation. Would you try to jack up a car in sand? Would you try to shoot a cannon out of a canoe? You must have a base. You must be strong through your entire body, or you will not last through a maximum effort peaking cycle without injury. Stage one is a period where you should concentrate on weaknesses. Is your technique poor because of a weak back? Do you have nagging injuries because of poor flexibility? Do you have a poor bench press because of weak shoulders? 
This is the stage when you should eliminate your weaknesses. Don't think about trying to lift the most weight. Think only about using the right technique. You are not only building your muscles, you are training your muscle memory. Teach your muscles to do things right from the beginning. Monitor yourself to see that you are using correct technique. Go to a lighter weight if necessary. Good form provides better overload for maximum strength development. Equalize opposing muscle groups. When you do a bench press, for example, you must also do bent rows for your upper back. When you work on your quads, you must also work on your hamstrings. And you must stretch to keep yourself flexible. Don't neglect this, because lack of flexibility will create an opening for injury and poor form under heavy iron. Here is a basic beginning cycle workout. You will use this workout up until 8 or 10 weeks before the contest or season. beginning you must keep a training diary it must tell the movement the poundage the degree of difficulty you feel with each set and the time it took for your workout from warm-up to cool down also during this foundational period remember to have fun playing sports like racquetball and basketball agility and coordination are essential to peak performance and sports can give you these qualities stage two your body is now ready to accept some major stress. You will now begin to increase your absolute strength levels. This is the stage where the old timers ended their training. Today, we know how to go light years beyond. Your stages will overlap. Only you know your body well enough to decide the speed at which to phase in the next stage. Now we go to the 10 movements. The 10 movements are similar to several of those used in your first workout, but now you begin building upon that foundation, concentrating more upon strength in each movement. As the weights get heavier, you must begin doing specific movements on different days. You must also allow your body sufficient rest time. is the correct technique for each movement. Okay, Bruce, back out of the rack slowly. Keep your body very upright and go straight down and straight back up. Don't hit the bottom position. Come near it. Stand up, very good. Do it again. Okay. Okay, lower the weight to your lower chest, elbows out. Push the weight off your chest in a C movement, in a big curve. Good, do it again. Again. All right. Okay, stand up. Now go down with a flat back and only slightly bent knees. Very good. Very good, come up. Okay, do it again. Your head out of the way, Richard. Pull the bar to your chin. Keep your forearm up and down. Now, downward. Straight up and down. Good. Go. Straight arms. You know what I mean by straight arms? My arms straight. Yeah. My arms straight? No. That's what I mean by straight up. Put your bicep against your ear. All right, now bend to the side. And stand straight back up. Straight to the side. And back up. Good. Straight to the side, Benny. And back up. 
Good, good. One arm at a time, straight up. Drive it harder. Good, good. Bend to the side, straight up. Bend and up. And bend and up. Good. Keep your elbows against your side. Now push down. Good. Keep them going. Straight down. Elbows straight. Good. Push. Okay. Lift, don't swing. Lift, don't swing and hold. And good, again. Lift, hold, and up. You will use these exercises until about three weeks before the contest or season. About 12 weeks out from the contest, you'll begin overlapping stage three. Now you should begin getting into a frame of mind where power, not strength, is paramount. This refocusing of your training energy calls for a highly specialized form of training. I call it compensatory acceleration training. Now hear me and hear me well. Compensatory acceleration training is your single most important tool for becoming truly powerful. It is the only method of training that can yield explosive power improvements and at the same time improve your absolute strength levels to your maximum potential. This form of training can make a difference of up to 20% on each lift. In order to explain what I mean by compensatory acceleration training, let's take a look at the squat. In the bottom position, your leverage is very poor because of angles of your hips, knees, and ankles. However, as you come up out of the bottom position, your leverage begins to improve the closer you get to lockout. In order to compensate for this improved leverage, you've got to apply acceleration to the bar. This is the only way to get truly maximum overload throughout the entire range of movement. Otherwise, overload is restricted to the bottom portion of the movement only.